You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. The transfer portal window is set to close here in the coming days. So for college coaching staffs, the ramp up in getting these guys on campus and getting them committed, namely before the semester starts, especially if you want these guys to participate in spring football, uh, you got some urgency. So it was a productive weekend for LSU. Um, a couple of cornerbacks and a defensive lineman committed to LSU over the weekend. Uh, Darian Deuce Chestnut, a four-star who was the number one cornerback out of New Jersey, um, spent the last couple of years at Syracuse. He was on campus this weekend, and he pledged to the LSU Tigers. So Deuce Chestnut adds another body to that growing cornerback room. Uh, the other was J.K. Johnson. Uh, J.K. Johnson, who has not made a formal announcement yet, but if you look at his Twitter uh, profile, he does, uh, like, there's no graphic or anything like that. He just put on his Twitter profile. You can pull this up, Holly. Um, his his bio pic is him in an LSU uniform, and his bio reads Ohio State Arrow LSU. So essentially, he's announcing that he's committed to LSU. So two more uh, veteran cornerbacks that LSU has picked up uh, via the transfer portal. And the other is Preston Hickey, who is joining LSU as a preferred walk-on. Defensive lineman from St. Paul's in Covington who has uh, spent the beginning of his career at Oklahoma State who this weekend announced his commitment to LSU after a visit uh, with the Tigers this um, uh, this past weekend where he was on campus for a visit. So uh, another another body there on the defensive line as LSU has been very busy adding players to that position in particular. Um, let, let's run through this here if we could. You know, One of the things that Brian Kelly has been... Um, uh, pretty adamant about is that he wants to make sure that as he rebuilds this roster, the portal is a is a tool. It's not a strategy. And maybe more so, what what he said is he doesn't want one year guys out of the portal. See, that's that's the unfortunate thing that happened to LSU in 2022, but it happened out of necessity. Just kind of. Rewind the clock a year, if you would, and remember where LSU was. Dwight McLaughlin hit the portal. Elias Ricks hit the portal. Cordell Flott went pro. I mean, you were sitting here looking at a, a really lean cornerback room. So LSU had to attack that position in the portal. So they go and they get Jarrett Bernard Converse. And they get Makai Garner. They bring in Colby Richardson. Uh, they bring in Brooks and Fouché from Arkansas, although they're kind of more like safety roles. But they had to go address the secondary. The unfortunate part is a lot of those guys were one-year guys. Jark Bernard Converse, one-year guy. McCar Mackay Garner, one-year guy. Colby Richardson, one-year guy. So you essentially hit the reset button again after the 2022 season. So Brian Kelly and the staff said, we're not doing that again. You know, we did it out of necessity to get guys on the field that had played college football before, but now we're going to build through not only the portal, but the high school ranks. And if we take portal guys, they're going to have more than one year of eligibility. So look at what we've seen them do already. Um, they went and they snagged Denver Harris from Texas A&M, who had just played one year there in College Station. So we've got three years of eligibility remaining. Former five-star, top 50 overall player in the country. Uh, Zai Alexander two-time FCS All-American from Lorville. So he's a Louisiana guy, played at Southeastern, two-time FCS All-American, 6'3", 185, physically fits the mold, a lot of experience, two years of eligibility remaining. Checks the box. Now look at the players that they signed here. Deuce Chestnut has spent the last two years at Syracuse. He was all conference in in his time there at Syracuse. So you're talking about a dude who's been a two-year starter, was all conference, and now is moving from the ACC into the SEC and is going to push immediately for one of those starting jobs. But again, a guy with two years of eligibility remaining. And then if you look at J.K. Johnson, similar, he's a guy that was a four-star in the 247 composite when he signed with Ohio State 
uh, out of DeSemet, and I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. I know we've talked about that before, but it's the place where Robert Steeples coached high school. As a matter of fact, J.K. Johnson and Makai Wingo were high school teammates. Johnson went to Ohio State. Wingo went to Missouri. They each spent time at their respective schools and now are going to be at LSU together. But J.K. Johnson, when he committed, uh, as a prospect in the 247 composite, y'all, he was listed as the number 50 overall player in the country and the number three cornerback in the country. So you're talking about a dude that was a highly coveted, sought-after high school prospect when he signed with Ohio State uh, a couple of seasons ago uh, in the class of 2021. So he just finished his second year there at Ohio State. So again, what you've seen Brian Kelly and his staff do is go get uber-talented guys who were four- and five-star top 50 players in the country and brought them into LSU now with multiple years of eligibility remaining. And maybe the best illustration of what LSU's defensive back room is going to be is a comparison to what it was. Here's what I mean. Look at 2022. You had Jark Bernard Converse, Makai Gardner, Colby Richardson, Seven Banks, who was basically injured all year. And then you had LaTerrence Welch, Ray Darius Jones, Demarius McGee, and neither of those guys played all year. So really you had Jarek, Garner, Richard, uh, Colby Richardson, LaTerrence Welch. And I guess you could throw Seven Banks, but he was injured. So you really had four guys, four guys that could play on the outside for you this year. Look at 2023. Of course, Jarek, Garner, Richardson, all gone. You got Harris, Chestnut, Alexander, J.K. Johnson, Seven Banks, LaTerrence Welsh, Jordan Allen returning as well. And then you signed three freshmen in this class with Jeremiah Hughes, Ashton Stamps, and then the big one was J.V. and Toviano. Yo, you have nine cornerbacks right now. Harris, Chestnut, Alexander, Johnson, Banks, Welch, Allen, and then the three freshmen. Excuse me, that's 10. Hashtag math. You have 10 cornerbacks on the roster next year. And of those 10, Harris, Chestnut, Alexander, Johnson, Banks, five of them have all been starters at the Power Five level at some point in their career. Well, forgive me, four of them, because obviously Zai Alexander hadn't been at the Power Five, but he's two-time FCS All-American. So let's say four have been Power Five starters. Five have been starters and played at a very high level at at times in their career. Y'all, only two can play, because Greg Brooks is coming back, and he's your starting nickel. So you look at this, and you just look at the contrast of, I mean, the third guy in 2022 was Colby Richardson, a McNeese transfer who had to bulk up and was sort of a surprise. Your third option might be a guy who was all conference in the ACC this past year. He might be your third or fourth guy. Your, your third or fourth guy might be a two-time FCS All-American. You built depth now at that position. You built depth and talent at that position, and it allows you to bring in the young guys like JV and Toviano and let them, let them come along slowly and kind of cultivate their skill set around this defensive back room. It's just, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic when you consider they that wasn't an elite group this past year, but they were good enough. And on paper, just with the numbers you have and the skins on the wall these dudes already have, you are dramatically better than you were just this past year. And all of these guys have more than one year of eligibility. Like, the only player who you could look at legitimately and say, yeah, they won't be back for 2024 is Seven Banks. And and you look, you may you may always lose a guy to a portal here or there. We just know the nature of, of the game now. But you've built depth and you've built you built great quality top line starting uh, ability, experience. You've got experience and quality depth, and you've got young talent that you can grow through your program as well. I mean, what Brian Kelly and his staff proved this past year, y'all, which we knew, was that they can coach. We knew they could coach. And when you stack elite signing classes on top of each other and marry that with this coaching, now you're competing for championships. And it's going to be in short order for LSU's back in there as well. So they've they've addressed the defensive front. We knew that they had to. They've added three dudes already along the defensive front. Now they've really hammered the secondary in the transfer portal I guess from here, you look forward to say, okay, where else can you supplement with great, talented players who want to be a part of a winning culture? 
and that's going to be the charge here for Brian Kelly and his staff the rest of the way. So Tigers had a couple of cornerbacks this weekend and a defensive lineman, and uh, I, my, I would venture a guess that they're probably not quite done yet. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.